Kakados Boker Or Bekim Balacha Day 43 Halacha Het Page 132 Earliest time The earliest possible time to say Baruch Shemar Ishtabah Em Pesuke De Zimra Is Alot HaShachar There are three opinions regarding the last time one could say these Berachot The most stringent opinions say that you may only recite it until the end of the fourth seasonal hour in the day Since Halacha requires one to recite Amidah Shachlit at that time so Pesuk Yedi Zimra is a preparation for Amida. So that's the, stri- the most stringent opinion. Another opinion is that one may recite it until midday, which is basically going to be Hasot, which is absolutely this time for reciting Amida Shachrit, even in an emergency. According to the third opinion, if someone purposely postpones his prayers till after the fourth seasonal hour, he may no longer receive, uh, recite the blessings or the Amida Shachrit, but he could say Amida is a voluntary prayer. If circumstances force the Bonus Shachrit beyond this time and it's not his fault, he may say the blessings of the Amidah of Shachrit until midday. In practice, right, we should follow the first opinion based on the principle of Safek Berachot Lakel. So basically, what is he saying? Hachimucha Levarech Baruch Shamar Ishtabach. Yeah, and Pesuke de Zimra should be the Sof Zman Tefila. Make sense? Okay. Let's see number one, five, four. Yeah? Shulchan Aruch. He ruled the mitzvah reciting the prayer of Shachri can be fulfilled until the end of the fourth hour. If someone failed to fulfill the mitzvah until after that time, it's possible to say that until midday. But he will not be rewarded for fulfilling the mitzvah of Shachri. Okay? The blessings of Rusha Mani Shabbach may certainly be recited up, up, up until the end of the fourth season hour, since that is the time allotted for the mitzvah of Shachri. The question is whether one could say that afterwards until midday. Just so one could say Amidah until midday. The Mishnah Barah ruled that it is permissible to say Pesukah Dezimah including Baruch Shaman Shabbach until midday. The author repeated this ruling in Mahane Yisrael and Arav Me'in Mazuz concurred with this ruling. So he also passed like that. So technically you have a Torah lion and you could do it until Chatzot. Which Shem Yes, everything. Normal. The Kut Yosef ruled that he may say until during the afternoon and he did not distinguish between someone who purposely postponed his prayers and someone who had no choice. So if you pay attention, the Yalkut Yosef is even much more lenient. In Mamash, you could do it even in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah? The Orlet Sion ruled much more stringently. Since Allah demands one fulfill the Mitzah Shachrit by the end of the fourth hour, this is also the limited time for blessings of Rusha and Yishtabach. The Allah ruled that if someone was forced by Sim to pray Shachrit during the fifth or sixth hour, he may say the Barachot of Rusha and Yishtabach, and if someone purposely postponed the prayers without good reason, he cannot fulfill the Mitzah during the fifth or sixth hour, he could say Amidah, but only with the intention or considered a voluntary, Nidava. In that case, he may not recite the Berachot since their purpose is to prepare us for filling the Mitzvah Shachrit. Right? He may recite his blessing but without the name of Hashem. Without Shem Malchut. He may never recite a Beracha, right? Except for the Amidah since voluntary Amidah corresponds to the offering of a voluntary sacrifice on the altar. It is possible that this is the intent of Mishabra as well since the ruling cited above in his name apply to someone who had no choice but to postpone Shachrit to the fifth and sixth hour. Regarding someone who purposely did it, the Mishnah Beruda says that if he wishes to say the Amidah afterwards, he should have intentions for it to be a Nidava, in difference with the Boskim rule that he may no longer say the Amidah of Shachrit. However, after examining the text carefully, it is clear that the Mishabra did not rule that, that this person should have the intentions for a Nidava, but rather it is recommended, okay, that he should have the intentions. That means that in reality, the Al-Khaz, that a person can still follow the Mishab Shachrit, although he will not be fully rewarded, he could still do it. And this concurs with the ruling of the Shulchan Ruch. If this is what the Mishabra means, then he would permit the person to say the Brachot, until that time as well. So it comes out technically speaking, so I don't know why he's saying Safi Berachot Lakel. Ah, he's passing not like anyone. Very interesting. Everyone understood just what happened? You could only understand in the Hebrew, Lemala. Sakel Lemala. Lemala, he says, that it starts from Alot Shachar. That there's nobody that argues. Then he brings down, okay, fine. When are you allowed to make the Berachot until? So the first Shita was the stringent opinion, which was Orlet Sion. Hour. Right, which is until the fourth hour. The next shita, right, is going to be Chatzot. the until chatzot, which is the or Torah. The some people come and they say that it all depends whether it's shogeg or mezid, and that's al chabrura. Yes, but but what happens if you're honest? Av makori matar be honest. No, you can't. No, I'm not sure. But amida, amida, tishkach al shabru shamal yishtabach. Kodem kol amida. No, that you can do after the Mitzvah. As because he said, "She ima ta yichol asot ad chatzot." As my evdel, lama pitom barusha mavishabach lo. Imata ken yichol asot ad amida 
עד חצות. כי זה נראה לי, אני נראה לי לדעתי, עמידה זה יותר חובה מברוך שאמר. נו, אבל זה... הלכה נאמר 9. Women are exempt from saying פסוקי לזמלה. If a woman wishes to say it, she may not say the ברכה אבל הוא שמה נשתבח. Based on the principle of Sveber Achol HaKelef, an Ashkenazi woman which is to recite it, she's Allah will be permitted to do so, and no one should protest. Says number 155. As demonstrated in the previous halakha, there are definite time limits for Pesukil Dizimra. Therefore, these blessings belong to the category of mitzvot, that are governed in mitzvah to Shazman Grama, or it's not really a mitzvah to say, but it's a mitzvah Shazman Grama, and therefore women are exempt from them. According to the Rambam Shulchan Aruch, women cannot say the Beracha on it. See the response of the Omen. The Olet Zion agreed that women may not say the Berachot volunteering to fill a mitzvah, but he ruled the women who could say the Berachot of praise and Shevach, there's no problems. Ad Baruch Shemani Shabach. The Kavachim also likewise ruled that a woman could make the Beracha as well. The Rishon Let Zion came and did not differentiate between the types of blessings. He ruled that it is forbidden to make a Beracha and we go by Saveh Berachot Lakel. By the way, the Minhag was also to do with Shem Malchut. Meaning that, uh, like Rabbi Zion and the Kavachim, they basically wanted to make a differentiation that it's not Bikat and Mitzvot. Meaning, when does Maran say that a woman is not allowed to make a bracha because she cannot say that she's commanded to if there's going to be mitzvah tasseh shazman grama? Here it's not a mitzvah tasseh, it's not a positive commandment, it's the Rabbanan. But technically speaking, even time bound, how much is the time bound? If, you, if we, he's going to shitato, that's a feperach kel until the fourth hour. But if we hold that you could do it until chatzot and there's no problem, right? And again, now you get into the question whether it's b'mezid, b'shogeg, or even without that, you could do it until chatzot. So therefore, technically speaking, Right? There's no problem then. So women could actually say it. And not only that, it's Birkat Hashevach. She's praising Hashem. So why wouldn't she be able to make a bracha to praise Hashem? So according to that she does. So then she can make the bracha, Baruch Shemani Shabach, even for Sfaradiyot, and only for Ashkenazim. And again, that's Orlet Zion and uh, the Kafa Chaim. And that's what I told you. So I tell women, if they want to make the bracha, Baruch Shemani Shabach, no problem with Zion. He's going, Lashitato, Saveh Berachol HaKel for everything here. Okay, number 10. If an individual in the synagogue yeah. <coughs> if an individual in the synagogue finishes saying the, the Brachot Abru Shamar before the Chazan, right, or the Misader, right, but usually it's not the Chazan that does it, it's somebody else that does it, so he can answer Amen to his Bracha even though he's not yet begun, he's more to that. That means basically don't say that once he said the Bracha Abru Shamar, he has to start immediately, he's more to that, because if not, Kilu, you made a Bracha, but you didn't benefit. It's like I'm going to make a Bracha of Shakul and then I'm going to answer to you. I have to benefit. Here, no. You're, if you finish Baruch Shamar, and then the other guy finishes, I can answer Amen. Even though I didn't start Mizmone Toda. Likewise, if he hears anyone else in the synagogue saying it, he also he answers Amen. Regarding Amen at this point is not considered an interruption, a pasek, between the blessing of Baruch Shamar and the Mitzvah of Rishadim Sukkot Zimra. One explanation for this is that because the Bracha Baruch Shamar is in itself part of the Mitzvah of Sukkot Zimra. So he already began the Mitzvah. So according to this, responding Amen at this point Right between is not is for sure permitted because you already started the mitzvah, so there's no problem, right? It's like you didn't make the hefsek. Another explanation is that the response of amen is in itself a song of praise. This is brought down in the Bet Yosef that amen is in itself shira, and therefore, according to either explanation, if someone right, that's what he says here. So therefore, you're responding amen by fulfilling the mitzvah. According to either explanation, if someone finishes the, uh, the blessing of Rosh Hashanah and then hears another person making a completely different bracha, he may also answer amen. And it's not considered an interruption. Nonetheless, it is best to hurry and recite at least one pasuk of Zimbole Tuda before the cantor finishes, right? In order to, for sure, that there's no problems whatsoever. And if it's difficult, it's not necessary because we already said. Okay? 156. The Chesel Alafim and the Benishchai, Prashat Vayigash, rule that if someone completes the blessing of Rushema before the cantor, he should rush to begin Zimbole Tuda and then respond to men. Okay, the Kavachim Sofer concurred with this ruling. So it comes out that it's also Chesel Alafim, which is the Beliaz El Papo, right, the Peloyuet, the Ben Ishchai, and the Kavachim. The Rishon Etzion, though, he came and he said that it's not necessary. You could you do it. But he did agree that if you can, yeah, for sure not. You know, why not? It's best to follow the instructions of the Chesel Alafim and Ben Ishchai, if you can. But if you can't, you don't have the problem. Number 12. Once someone begins the blessing of Rosh Amar, he may not engage in conversation until he completes the Amidah. So you started Baruch Shamar, not allowed to do nothing. Yeah, nothing whatsoever, until he, be, he completes, he finishes the Amidah. Even if he needs to say something for the sake of a mitzvah, he may not interrupt Pesukah Zimra, he must wait until he finishes the blessing of Yishtabach. So even for a Dvar Mitzvah, nothing. 
So the second you start Baruch Shamar, that's it. Until the end of the Amidah? Yes. Until the end of Amidah. No, 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 no. Yishtabach was for, for a mitzvah. Yeah, yeah, that's for a mitzvah. That's for a mitzvah. That's for a mitzvah. Yeah, putting on tefillin is a mitzvah. So for in those places when they used to do that, they would pray until Yishtabach. They would finish Yishtabach, put on tefillin, and then continue. 100%. Okay? One, which one? Bring it down. Okay? So basically like this, there's a mistake that's brought down. Why? Bishulchan Aruch, in Siman Nun Ale Sivdal, it says, Tzarich lafsik lizaher me lafsik vidibur me shetchi baruch shaman at sof amida. Yeah, until the end of amida. Now on this, when it says the end of amida, the Mishnah Brura already in Sif Katan Tet says, when you have nefilat apayim, you're not allowed to speak until after nefilat apayim. Where does that come from? Shulchan Aruch also. That means even though Shulchan Aruch here says you're not allowed to talk from Baruch Shaman until after Amidah, really mean it's not after Amidah, it's until after Nefilat Apayim. But then you have to look in Nefilat Apayim. Now when we're talking about Alachot of, of uh, Chazarat Hashatz, again we go to Chazarat Hashatz, right? And therefore he comes and he says, right? Kesheshnech uh, Zibu Chazarat Vila Kalisham Lishtok. And if you don't have nine people answering, it's Karol and Batala. And therefore, call Adam. So imagine what it is, right? When we're talking about this concept. You understand? Then afterwards, he comes and he says, We spoke about this one, something crazy. Somebody that speaks in the middle of Chazarat Hashatz is a murderer. The only time in the Torah where the Torah uses the expression Gadol Avono Mineso that his sin is so bad that he cannot even carry the burden of a sin is by when Cain killed Hevel. The only time. Gadol Avono Mineso. This is brought down here. Right? And that's what it says over here. Vezem Levada Yisur. Okay, then here, here in the Kavachim brings down besides the Yisur speaking in the Beit Knesset. Meaning there's a few Yisurim here. There's a Yisur speaking in the Beit Knesset. There's a Yisur speaking with Tfilin on. If it's during Shachrit and he's got Talit and Tfilin. So he's speaking during Tfilin on and then it's a Hesech Adat also. And then he's... So imagine how many Yisurim he has. You got Beit Knesset. You got the Tfilin. You got Chazrat Hashatz. You've got... So I'll look how many there is. Gadol Avono Mineso. You understand? So it's very, very powerful. Okay, so again, obviously... And each one is Alachot. So let's see here the... 157. Actually, in those days when Tachonim are recited, so it's going to be prohibited until after Tachonim, Shulchan Aruch 131.1, ruled by the Mishabra, added also that if someone does not interrupt and converse between Amidah and Tachonim, his Tachonim prayer will be far less effective. Tachonim is considered an extension of the Amidah. That means, not only, okay, it's a sur, but if you already did it, if you already did it, it's less effective. It's not as effective. Yeah, 158. It is permissible to interrupt for the sake sake of a mitzvah, as is brought down in Shulchan Aruch fifty four six. So therefore, when after Yishtabach you're allowed to stop for a mitzvah, so here you're going to be stopping for a mitzvah. Yeah, but again, after Yishtabach you cannot do it before Yishtabach. After Yishtabach for a mitzvah. So from Baruch Shaman until Yishtabach you're not allowed to at all. After Yishtabach you can stop for a mitzvah. Then afterwards, anyway, you're not allowed to from Baruch Shaman until after the Amidah, but really, be until after Tachunim you're not allowed to talk. Kapish until you were clear. Very good.